Now, from your weather authority, meteorologist Cody Bailey. Well, it was a warm and somewhat humid day today in comparison to where we're headed for the next several days, especially by the middle uh, to second part of next week. Uh, the humidity fairly tolerable, even though it was pretty hot for part of the tri-state. And of course, we had those summer-like downpours with a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings earlier this afternoon as well. And I think we'll see a few more downpours developing early tomorrow. Once again, nothing to cancel any outdoor plans you may have, but certainly want to keep an eye to the sky, especially if you get any of those uh, heavy downpours with the lightning as well. With a lot of people out outside camping, maybe swimming, and just outside in general. But outside right now, for the most part, we are quiet and dry. But up to the north, primarily along the U.S. 50 corridor, we're seeing some light rain returns back in part of the, uh, really, our northern uh, fringe counties in southern Illinois, southwest Indiana as well, again, as you go along U.S. 50. But some heavier rain now coming up on our radar out towards the west. So again, not a washout tonight or early tomorrow morning, but a few more of those pop-up storms could be moving through, really thunder showers. Hours. We're not really seeing a lot of, in the way of uh, thunder or lightning strikes being detected right now. But here's a closer look. Again, some very light rain returns, and especially in comparison to what we had earlier today, not the downpours or slow-moving downpours. Not only was it heavy rainfall, but these storms, especially across the Western Kentucky Parkway, were only moving at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Very heavy rainfall. So quickly, those uh, totals, uh, places just to the south of Madisonville near Earlington and closer to the Central City area as well, picking up two to nearly three inches of rain with those downpours earlier this afternoon. Earlier this morning, near the uh, Clay, Richland, Lawrence counties area, anywhere from as little as two to those shades of red, closer to five plus inches. Now that's estimated on Doppler radar, but we did have a couple of flood advisories and flood warnings in Hopkins County with those downpours earlier today. But outside right now, a very uh, beautiful scene, the patriotic blue bridge there with the red, white, and blue lights from our roofclaim.com tower camera looking towards the uh, twin bridges from Elvis Park. Traffic appears to be moving along uh, just fine as well here on the Saturday night. And finally, on the east side of Evansville, uh, looking towards I-69 and the Lloyd Expressway, that's our Diamond Valley Federal Credit Union uh, tower camera, where temperatures now everywhere except for Owensboro. Still the low and holdout at 80 degrees. Everyone else in the upper 70s, 70, 70, the airport in Evansville, 75 in Henderson, uh, Dixon at 76. Same story for Madisonville. We'll all fall a few more degrees. I think somewhere basically between 70 to 75 degrees. Now, the theme of the next few days, at least, showers are possible, but I don't think it's going to be enough of a widespread event to really put a dent in our drought-like conditions. And this is the current index. These are updated every Thursday from the uh, Drought Monitor Index. And again, that expansion of the moderate drought category along the Ohio River. Rivers, likewise, not a lot of rain, so not a lot of activity with the rivers. But the little rainfall that we have seen uh, has at least started to stabilize and a few crests in the forecast, but again, very low. The Ohio and Evansville rising slowly. Crest tomorrow night for the Wabash at Mount Carmel, about four and a half feet. Ten feet even for the green at Calhoun. White River at Petersburg is in the process of cresting right now. A little Wabash River at Carmi actually continuing its slow fall as we go through the next couple days. And of course, if there's any of those downpours that develop over those gauges, obviously could impact those forecasts. But again, not a widespread event. And once again, the theme of the rest of the holiday weekend, nothing to cancel any outdoor plans you may have. Just to keep an eye to the sky. And of course, if you hear thunder, that's your cue to go inside. As even if storms aren't severe, they could still pose a threat with the heavy rainfall and of course the dangerous lightning as well. But tomorrow, much like today, a few isolated storms. Some of you will get those downpours. Others won't see a drop of rain at all for your Sunday. And that's the same situation as we head into your Independence Day for the 4th of July Monday. A few off and on pop-up showers and storms, but once the sun goes down, just in time for fireworks, things are calm, but it is going to be hot and very humid for Monday, the first of several very humid days for next week with highs in the mid to upper 90s. And with those high humidity levels, easily with heat index readings into the uh, triple digits as well. But for the rest of tonight, temperatures falling through these 70s, and a few of you may be into the upper 60s. Uh, tomorrow, again, much like today, ranging from the upper 80s to the north, low 90s to the south in western Kentucky, right around 90 here in the metro. As we take a look at your 70 forecast, again, weather aware tags for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, due to the very hot and very humid conditions. A few scattered showers and storms are possible. 
once again, I don't think it's anything to really put a dent in our drought-like conditions, but maybe enough to give you some brief relief uh, from the heat and humidity. But it does look like a cold front late Friday, early Saturday will finally bring that relief, at least in the humidity. It's still going to be pretty hot uh, with 90s on Friday, still around 90 next Saturday. But looks like another rough week in terms of the heat and humidity here across the tri-state.